All right. Well, hello, everybody. Again, this is Professor Sam Lanzafame, and today we are going to wrap up our Chapter 4 series. Today we're going to focus on closing entries. <clears throat> In the previous sessions that we've had, we were working on how to do a worksheet, and this is the example that we used throughout the first session in Chapter 4. We completed this 10-column worksheet, and then from this 10-column worksheet in the second session of Chapter 4, we completed the financial statements that were associated with that worksheet. So today what we're going to do is now pretty much do the almost the very last step in the accounting cycle from a journal entry point of view, and that is to do the closing entries. So let me just put in focus the information that we need. And I have a partial worksheet showing all the way to the left. Uh, the other part of the worksheet is there, but we're, we only need to focus on the material that's in the income statement and in the owner's equity balance sheet area. And before we get started, let's take a look at some notes that I've already pre-created here. And please write these down or pay close attention because it's really, really important that you understand how to do this process. For the first time in these sessions, we are going to break some rules. The rules I'm referring to are the debit aid and the liquor rules that I introduced to you back when we first started session, uh, session one of chapter two, where we first learned how to do debits and credits. If you recall, I had a couple of uh, little tricks, little mnemonic devices to help you remember your debits and credits, and I came up with something called debit aid and A for assets, D for drawing, E for expenses. And you can see those T accounts at the right of your screen. And if you can remember debit aid, that means the debit aid accounts go up by a debit, they go down by a credit. And then on the other side, we created the liquor accounts, LCR. Use your imagination and say the word liquor, LCR. Liabilities, capital and revenue, those three go up by a credit. So you got half the accounts going up by debits and the other half go up by credits. If you recall, of these six that we were dealing with, four of them I referred to as shopping cart accounts. Those four were drawing and expenses in debit aid and capital and revenue from liquor. Those four always went up. So we always debited drawing, always debit expenses, always credit capital, always credit revenue. That's what I said over and over and over again. But in this chapter, we got to close those accounts out. We got to close out drawing, we got to close out the expenses, and we have to close out the revenues. We want those accounts to be closed down to zero so that when I start a brand new period, I'm starting with a fresh, clean slate in those accounts. It helps me to track my monthly activities or period activities in a much easier fashion. So we're going to end up breaking the rules. We're going to end up, for the first time, crediting drawing. But this is only a one-time moment, right? Because after that, the new month starts, we go back to the standard rules. So closing entries takes place once per period at the end, and we break rules. So one of the accounts we close is drawing. One of them, another one that we close is expenses. And the third one we close is revenue. So let's look at the top of the screen, and you'll see that I have three reasons why we do closing entries. Three. Call them goals. Call them a purpose. But goal number one is to update capital in the general ledger. That is the number one reason why we do it. Okay. Reason number two, to get the net income amount to appear in the books. And remember, the books are referred to the journal and the ledger. So not only do we see the net income in the financial statements, we also want to see the net income showing up in our journal and also in our ledger. To help us do this, purpose number three is not only a goal, but it's also the procedure. We want to close the temporary accounts, and if you rearrange the letters, the first letter in drawing, the first letter in expenses, and the first letter in revenue, it's not debit aid, it's not liquor, it's red. So what we want to do when we do the closing entries, we want to close out the red accounts. <coughs> okay, so let's take a look at the procedure. Down at the bottom of the screen, you see under the T accounts, 
four potential closing entries. I will tell you, you always have to do the first three. The fourth one, you may or you may not have to do. If the owner of the company didn't make a withdrawal this period, then there would be no account to close. So the minimum closing entries is three, the maximum closing entries, four. So it's either going to be three or four each time you do closing entries. But use the the word red or the color red to help you guide, you know, help guide you through this process. All right, so what we're going to end up seeing is purpose number two and number three come into fruition in this example. You won't actually see uh, the updating capital in this particular video, but you will see purpose two and purpose three, and I'll discuss uh, how purpose one is impacted as we do the closing entries. Okay, so let's look at the procedure and then we'll do uh, the actual example. Procedure number one, we want to close revenue and we want to close it into income summary. Income summary is a brand new account. We've never seen it before. Uh, it really does not have a home in any of the six categories. It's kind of like a loaner account, but we just need this account to help us do the closing entry process. So whoever invented this stuff, I know it was originally Luca Pacioli back in the late 1400s who came up with double entry accounting. And a little cool little fact here, um, in one of his books, one of his best friends was Leonardo da Vinci. And Leonardo da Vinci actually illustrated one of, one of uh, Luca Pacioli's books. Kind of cool. Kind of a fact. Who knows? Might be on Jeopardy someday. But that's neither here nor there. Whoever came up with this account income summary discovered that they needed something to help them close the books. So this account was created. You notice income summary is used to help you close your revenues and your expenses. The last time we saw revenues and expenses together was in an income statement right and what does an income statement do for you it helps you figure out your profitability but more specifically either net income or net loss so let's think positive and let's think it creates income so look what this account is called income summary a summary of your income so it only makes sense that we would only put revenues and expenses in there hopefully that makes sense to you as well okay and then you notice closing entry number three, we say thank you closing entry for your help in number one and number two, now go away. So in entry number three, we get rid of income summary and look what we dump it into, capital. Remember objective number one or purpose number one was to update capital. So somehow capital had to get involved in this process. And then closing entry number four, we're gonna close the drawing account if it exists and we'll close that one into capital. So. Closing entries one and two, revenues and expenses get closed in the income summary. Closing entries three and four, the income summary and drawing get closed into capital. So we're going to follow that word red. It'll guide us through the first two. We take a little time out to do the closing of income summary, and then we return to the letter red and finish off with the drawing. So here goes. In the general journal, you are going to center the words closing entries. This way we are separating these entries from the rest of the pack. We already, uh, previous to this, had done adjusting entries and we wrote adjusting entries just like I'm writing here. And before adjusting entries, you had your regular normal day-to-day -day entries and those didn't get any special designation. Just adjustments and closings get a special title in the general journal. I have the year already up here. Uh, if you recall, we were dealing with the month of December. So let's make sure we stay consistent in this problem. So I'm going to put in here in the date December 31st. And now let's do the first closing entry. What I'm going to do is work off of this worksheet. Okay. Uh, normally you would work off of your ledger or your T accounts. But in this particular session, we're going to work off the worksheet. The worksheet has the same information that would be in your ledger or T accounts. In fact, you may even find this to be even easier because if you notice the word credit, the word debit above these columns. The accounts that are going to be involved in the closing entry process are these. 
the ones that I'm highlighting in red lettering or ink. Okay, so those are the accounts that will be involved. Nothing else is involved in the process. Assets are not, liabilities are not. Okay, actually, capital, the balance in capital has nothing to do with the closing entry journal entries. But capital, thanks to the closing entries, will ultimately either go up or down and match what we said in our statement of owner's equity. But in terms of actual procedure, the amount in capital is irrelevant to the process. In other words, I could make this thing blank. I could completely fill it in, and I can still do this process. So the balance in capital is irrelevant to the process. Okay? So let's go through and do the closing entries. The first one, close revenue into income summary. So find your revenue in either your T account, your ledger, or here, a worksheet. And remember, our revenue in this problem was called professional fees. Again, if the word earned revenue is not clearly identified in the account name, remember your revenue is located immediately above your very first expense. So this professional fees is our revenue. It has a credit balance, and how do you close something? You do the opposite. So really the, the magic phrase here, other than red, is do the opposite. Do the opposite of what you normally do to close an account. So if something has a credit balance, to close it, you have to debit it. So I'm going to debit for the first time in any of these sessions we are going to debit our revenue account. And I'm just going to put in parentheses here revenue so that you remember what that means. Okay? And we are going to debit that for 6600 And now the thing that we have to do is what do we close it into? Because remember, when you do a journal entry, your debits have to equal your credits. They must equal. So I know I got to credit something for 6600 what do we close it into? Look at the procedure. We close revenue into this brand new account only used in this closing entry process, income summary. Don't overthink it. Don't like, why'd they come up with that name? That's not your business. All right, but it does make sense if you think about it because income summary, summary of your income. So we want revenues and expenses to basically end up in this income summary. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to follow uh, the activities of income summary and just post them. So I made a little T account here at the bottom of the screen in yellow, and we're just going to follow what happens to income summary. You'll find if you make a little T account for yourself, it makes your life a lot easier when doing closing entries. Okay, so the first closing entry is done. The second closing entry I want to close out my expenses, okay? <clears throat> By the way, if you want a little explanation, let's put one in. How about if we put something short and sweet? Closed rev into ink sum. Explanations you are allowed to abbreviate. Okay, so now we go to do the next closing entry, which is also on the 31st. Remember, closing entries take place on the last day of the period, just like adjustments do. So now we want to close out all of our expenses. We're going to do this in one big journal entry, not one, two, three, four, five, six separate ones. One compound entry. So expenses normally carry a debit balance. How do you close something with a debit balance? Do the opposite. You got a credit. But remember, when you do journal entries, you have to type the debit first. So even though I don't know this number, I kind of do, but I'm pretending I don't know. Let's just put this in a, in a separated color here. I need to leave that blank because I know I'm going to come back and fill in that number. But that number will represent the total of all my expenses. So I want to now credit each expense. Remember, why am I doing this? Because I want to close out the expenses just like I closed out the revenue. So I'm going to credit for the first time an expense account. Feels weird, but we've always debited expenses. You've heard me say so many times, always debit expenses, always debit expenses. Here is the one time we break the rule. 
We're now going to credit advertising expense. And that is for 175. We're going to credit telephone expense. This should feel weird to you if you've been used to the rules since the beginning. But remember what we're trying to do is close the account out. We want to bring these accounts down to zero. And the only way you can do that is by doing the reverse of what you normally do. And we got insurance expense. and then we have depreciation expense okay so I have all my credits in here so now what I want to do is add these all up and I'm gonna put their total in the debit spot again my debits have to equal my credit so my income summary debit is completely dependent on what my expenses add up to so let's have Excel do the math for me I'm going to add them all up and voila 2222 seen that number before absolutely here it is right down here the same 2222 we saw in the worksheet so in essence by us coming up with 2222 here we're like verifying oh good I did do the math correctly okay so now let me post this 2222 into my little T account that I created for income summary. Okay, so now let's figure out what our balance is in income summary. So, my first question to you is Are you expecting this balance to have a debit balance or a credit balance? I know we have no experience with this T account, but just based on any T account we've used before, is the balance going to be on the debit side or the credit side? If you said credit side, great job. The reason why you said credit side, hopefully it wasn't a guess, hopefully it was because, well, my credit is bigger than my debit. And that's the reason. So if I subtract 6,600 minus 2,222, look at the number I get, 4,378. That's the same 4,378 we labeled as net income in the worksheet. Well, what the heck do you think this is? It's net income, summary of your income. Income summary is a summary of our income. Okay, so let me go back and finish the second entry by putting a little explanation. Closed expenses into income summary. So now we're ready to move on to this third closing entry. <clears throat> In the third closing entry, we want to close income summary. Look at the procedure. Close income summary, and what are we closing it into? Capital. Remember, that was the main reason why we do closing entries, was to update capital. All right, capital's been sitting here at 7,000 for a long time, but according to our financial statements, remember when we did the statement of owner's equity? Capital ended up being 10,948. So if it's 10948 in the stuff we show our clients and the general public, then our books need to show 10948. So the only way you can get your capital to change in your T accounts is by doing these closing entries. Okay? So income summary currently has a credit balance of 4378. How do you close anything with a credit balance? You got to debit it. That's correct. So we're going to debit income summary for that 4378. So now I got to credit something. And that something is the capital account. So we're going to credit John Davis capital. And that's going to be for 4378 as well. So when I go and post that 4378 you will notice that my balance in income summary is now zero. And we've accomplished goal number three by closing that out.
So 4378 minus 4378, and we do have a zero balance. Okay. You know what? I'm going to make a T account <coughs> for our capital. Just give me one quick second, and this way you can see. We'll call it John Davis Capital. And remember, this account started with $7,000 in it. And let me just make a T here, and we'll be rocking and rolling. Okay, so let's make this yellow as well. Might as well make them both stand out. All right, so now John Davis Capital started with 7000 but we just credited that account for 4378 So let's post that in there and take a look now at our balance. And our balance has now gone from 7000 up by 4378 we're now sitting at 11378 If you remember our previous sessions let me just show you the statement of owner's equity right next to it and take a look at capital started out at 7000 went up by 4378 net income and then our subtotal 11378 so this T account will end up mimicking what our statement of owner's equity shows if we end up doing it right. Remember purpose number one was to update capital and right now we're seeing it updated. Okay. So initially I said we wouldn't see this but what the heck we can squeeze it in. So this closing entry will say this is closed ink sum into capital and again you have a lot of flexibility in your explanation. They're actually optional. You don't actually even have to do them. Okay, finally, closing entry number four. Number four says close drawing. Now, if there is no drawing, then we're done. We don't have to do closing entry number four. We don't have to worry about the D in red. But we do notice there is a drawing account in this problem. Okay, and Let's just kind of take a look at the whole worksheet here. You can see there was a drawing right from the get-go, and that's one of the ones that I put in red. So now, drawing is the only item out of the owner's equity balance sheet that is involved in the closing entry process. Okay. By the way, notice this 4378 came from the T account. Remember the balance in capital was 7000 Remember how I made this black and said, doesn't matter what the balance in capital is, the procedure that you see in the journal entry has no impact by that number. So please do not put 7000 in this entry. That is the number one mistake that students make. I can't tell you how many tests I've graded and I see 7000 and 7000 here. Okay, you're trying to close income summary. You're not trying to double or close capital. You never close capital. You're trying to close income summary. So be careful of that. Number one error. Okay, so now let's close drawing. Drawing currently has a debit balance. How do you close something with a debit balance? You got to credit it. So let me just uh, skip the debit spot just for a quick second and go right to the credit. So I'm going to credit John Davis drawing for the $430. <clears throat> I now want to debit something for $430. And what's that something? If you look at our little procedure, we're going to close drawing into capital. What happens to capital when you debit it? It goes down and drawing makes your capital go down. Little explanation. Closed draw into capital. Okay, let's post. The capital account is now going to get debited. 
for the $430. And let's do one final tally to figure out what our final result is in capital. And when we do the math, 11,378 minus 430, we get 10,948. Let's take a look at the statement of owner's equity right next to it. And take a look, 10,948. So not only does the general public know our new balance is 10,948, now internally, our books show 10,948. So to wrap this up, Remember, the whole purpose of doing closing entries was, number one, to update capital. Number two, to get the net income to appear in the books. Well, here's our closing entry, number three. And that contained our net income number. And also in our T accounts, we see the net income number. So we definitely impacted our books. And then finally, to close the temporary accounts. Revenue is now shut down to zero, expenses are now shut down to zero, and drawing is now shut down to zero. And those are the closing entries. Okay, there would be one final trial balance you would do, and that's called a post-closing trial balance, and then that would be the final step in the accounting cycle. I hope you found these series, uh, these sessions helpful. And uh, I'll be doing more in the future, probably for corporation instead of non-corporation. All right. You guys have a great, great day, and hopefully I'll see you again soon. Take care. Bye-bye.